So we just finished planting all of our potatoes, although we noticed when we went home uh, that our dog dug them up while we were at the show yesterday. So, so we will be replanting. Replanting potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> so I told everyone we were done planting potatoes yesterday. That was a lie. <laughs> so typically potatoes, we are done planting um, on St. Patrick's Day. So that's, a, that's an easy way to remember, just plant all your potatoes on St. Patrick's Day. Again, we plant pretty much all of them in the 20 gallon or 15 gallon smart pots. Uh, we have some for sale over here, by the way, the, the 15 gallons or the smallest we have for sale here. We have the, the other larger ones too. Um, but potatoes are really easy to grow. Um, the way that you plant them is by buying old potatoes, basically. Uh, and the, you, you, I'm sure you've seen this before in your, in your pantry where they start to have the sprouts. So. Yeah, so each one of those becomes a new plant. So each potato will produce two, three, sometimes four new plants. So uh, just take a potato. No, don't take one from the grocery store because oftentimes those are sprayed with chemicals that keep them from sprouting. So, and they, that could inhibit growth. And now if you go to an, like an organic grocery store, buy it from there, that should be safe. We've done that in the past. And that's sometimes an, an easy way to find cheap seed potatoes of unusual varieties. like. Purple ones, yes. which Those are her are my favorite. Favorite, yes. And not just the color. Well, kind of the color. I am partial to the purple. Yes. But it is beautiful, but it tastes really good too. And the purple color comes with nutrients that we don't often get. Um, and it's it's uh, out of all the potatoes you can grow, the purple and the blues are some of the ones that are best for you. So. It's just fun eating like purple or blue mashed potatoes. <laughs> it's so weird. Like the kids yeah. are always like, "What?" <laughs> it tastes great. So the way that you plant them is, you know, like one potato is going to have, you know, imagine two eyes coming off of it. Cut that potato in half and then set that on the counter and let it callous over. It'll take about five to seven days ish, I guess, depending on. Yeah. But the point is, you don't want to plant that immediately in the ground because that's an open wound on the potato and bacteria from the soil can get into it. So when you let it callous over, the potato naturally does that and then it's ready to be planted. So you can put that in the ground. You space them four inches apart in one of the smart pots. So in one of the smart pots, we'll basically fill the smart pot halfway up and then put one all around, make a little shape, and then fill it back up. Um, and then that's pretty much all there is to potatoes and then just keep them watered. And, um, and they do re they're do really, really easy to grow. Sweet potatoes are pretty much the same way. Well, we'll talk about sweet potatoes in a bit. They're different, but we grow them in the bag the same way once we have the, the starch for them. Um, you can harvest potatoes early. You don't have to wait until they're fully developed. Uh, you can harvest them as new potatoes. In a smart pot, you would just basically have a segment of it that you harvest in that area and leave the rest of them alone. Um, that's what makes that easy. One thing I want to mention too is um, potatoes can, if, if, they, if the sun gets to the potato part, it turns them dangerous. If, if, a, if you ever have a green potato, that can, it can really hurt you, don't eat it. So that's why uh, oftentimes potatoes are mounded because as they grow, you'll start to see potatoes. So one way you can help with that in smart pots is by planting you know, halfway, the, the smart pot halfway, filling with soil, and then as they start to grow, just continue adding soil to the smart pot. So um, especially those larger, like the 20 gallons, half of a container is perfect amount of soil to get it started. And then that also gives you um, some protection of sorts for the plant because the, the sides of the smart pot will be some wind protection and, and things like that. So uh, another thing I want to mention with potatoes is if you get start, if you start them in March and we get uh, a late freeze and they all die, don't worry, they're going to, they're going to send off new eyes. Just leave them in the ground. They'll come back. So if they die off, they'll, they'll be okay. As far as, uh, as cooking potatoes, I mean, obviously... I, I think everybody knows how to eat a potato. I mean, <laughs> mash it, bake it. Yeah, I mean, we know what to do with potatoes. Yeah, one of my favorite so. things, though, I don't know if you guys have ever tried it, though, is adding chives to, to it. So good. And, and these right here, this, these are chives, too. But a lot of people don't know that these purple flowers are edible. And they have the most amazing flavor in them. So if you add this to the potatoes too, so good, so good. She likes yeah, things that are purple too. I get very excited. <laughs> she loves purple food. <laughs> as far as um, things to plant with your potatoes, we planted, so the way that we did most of our potatoes, again, we did the, the 20 gallons, but we did a couple bags that were that size of potatoes. And then those, we sprinkled seeds for basil around it because um, they're a great companion plant for potatoes. So. Um, 
uh, pests with potatoes. There is a potato beetle, this thing here. Um, yeah, it's, they're pretty easy to control through hand picking. Uh, you can also, I don't think we have the trap on here, but the trap should work for it as well. There's a basic in insect trap you can build that's a, a yellow solo cup, like the you know, solo cups you drink out of. They have yellow ones. Um, and the reason why yellow is important is because it looks like a flower to an insect. I mean, it's a yellow thing, it has an opening like a flower, and it really looks like a flower if you get some cotton swabs and put essential oils on it. Uh, clove is one that seems to really attract them. So they smell that, they really think it's a flower, and then you've got, you put glue all around the outside. They have this sticky glue, this uh, tangle trap sticky glue. We've got a link to it in the app. It's under cucumber beetles. Let me I go to that sure and show this there. trap in there. Um, and you can basically just paint the outside yeah, so the, we have we have the, the cucumber beetle traps on Burpee, but you can also, the, this tangle trap stuff, you can paint the outside of the cello cup. I know we have blogs about. And uh, I know we've got it there somewhere. I was going to say, I know there's a blog. There post. it is. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that sticky glue is what goes on the outside of it. And um, the one concern I had about it when we first started was that it would get a lot of beneficial insects tangled up in it. Um, every now and then we'll see a moth or something that had its wing on it. I've never seen butterflies or anything like that. We get some fruit flies and stuff like that, but I'm not losing sleep over the fly situation. Yeah, even though they're beneficial, I got to draw a line somewhere. <laughs> and flies are my enemy, so I've decided that. Um, yeah, I <laughs> heard that. She said mine too. Um,